section 6.2, representations of functions. Last um, section we talked about you can take make a function and represent it through ordered pairs, mapping diagrams, tables, and graphs. Well, this also means that we can do th this. We can represent it through equations. And yes, this means that all the stuff that you have been doing from chapter four all the way up until now is still with you and it's not going anywhere. So just to kind of review some things to kind of go back, we are still going to be working with slope formula. M equals y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. Basically, remember that slope, M is slope, is the change in y over the change in x. Another thing that we need to remember is the slope is y-intercept form. Uh, y equals mx plus b, you should know that by now. And this is something that you may have to use as well, it's called the point slope form. y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Uh, all of this stuff right here, I am not going to review it so much in this video. This is stuff from chapter four's videos. Uh, you are free to go back and refresh your memory on all this. I'm gonna be using this material and using these things um, to do these problems, but I'm not going to go over every possible way to solve these things. Case in point, let's go right into it. It says write an equation that describes the function, and here I have as a mapping diagram. My job is to write an equation. There are oodles of ways of figuring the answer to this problem using this information right here. I am not going to show you every possible way of solving these things. This is something that you should be aware of by this point in time. And like I said, please feel free to go back and check those videos out on your own time. So let's just go through it. It's wanting me to write an equation. So basically it's telling me to write an equation that says mx plus b. All right, so the things that I need to know for this particular thing is what is my slope and what is my y-intercept. Well, the good part is we actually can do all both of these pieces of information just by looking at this mapping diagram. The first thing that we can find out right out the bat is actually our y-intercept. Recall the y-intercept is when uh, a line crosses the x, uh, the y inter the y axis. Okay, so that meaning if I were to kind of graph it over here, whatever this point is, it's going to be the x value will be zero and the y value can be anything depending on where it crossed that y axis and we actually have that right in front of us right here we have an input of zero and output of 10 that's telling me that the y intercept is 10 all right now the next piece is the slope recall one of our definitions of slope uh, is rise of a run is a change in y over the change in uh, X. So notice that my change in Y is going 10, 11, 12, 13. That's going plus one each time. All right. Notice my change in out in input is also plus one each time. So what is my slope? Well, my slope is one, which is my change in Y over one, which is my change in X, or we can simply say one. All right, now that I know what my slope is and I know what my y-intercept is, I'm gonna plug it in there. Y is equal to one X plus 10, or I can simply say Y is equal to X plus 10. Straightforward, pretty easy. Could I have done this another way? Absolutely. I'm just not gonna do it in this video. Same concept on this particular one. I need to know my slope. I need to know my y-intercept. Can I do that? Well, yes, actually, if we look at it, I have an input of zero right here going to an output of zero. So that means that my y-intercept is zero. What is my change in y? Well, that looks like it's a plus three each time. Well, this is a plus one each time. So that means my change in y is three. My change in one x is one. So my ultimate slope is 3. Plug this into my equation. Y is equal to 3x plus 0. Simplify. Y is equal to 3x. Now, I know I did that fast, but like I said, this should be review for you. All right. Number three. This is basically trying to write a rule or a equation. It says the output is 8 less than the input. 
pause for just a second and let's go slow. The output. Well, the output, what variable do I use for that? Well, I use the variable y. Y is my output. Is. When you see the word is in mathematics, you need to think equals. And then it says eight less than the input. That's telling me that my input is going to be more than my output, but it's not so because of this. It's eight less than my input. So y equals x minus eight. All right. Uh, why don't you just take a moment I'm not, uh, and see if you can figure out number four on your own. Pause the video if you need to. I'm not going to put my normal card up there, but pause it if you want to. This one right here would be the output of Y is double the input. Straightforward. All right. Numbers 5, 6, 7, and 8 should be very much review for you. We did this multiple times. It's saying, here's your equation, Y equals X minus 8, and it's telling you to find the value of Y for the given value of X. If X is 5, what's 8? Well, we just basically plug 5 in the place of X. So Y is equal to 5 minus 8. Well, what's that equal to? Negative 3. So y is equal to negative 3. Now, I will get, uh, why don't you pause the video and try the next ones on your own? So you should have gotten y is equal to 24, y is equal to 39, and y is equal to 3. If you need any help on that, you know where to find me. All right. Graph the function. Again, this should be review for you, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on explaining all this. Um, the one thing I will mention here to kind of help you out is on number 12. It says y equals x divide by 2 minus 4. This one might be able to throw you off just a little bit, but we can rewrite this equation to be something a little bit more understandable. What's in front of this x is actually a 1. So 1 divided by 2 is 1 half. So what we can rewrite this equation to be is y is equal to 1 half x minus 4. Now that you know all of this, it's just a matter of graphing. And I'll do one with you here in just a second. Let me set up my paper. All right, so got my paper. I went on and set up a grid here. Let's go ahead and at least do one with you, and then I'm going to let you do the other ones. Um, I've given you a hint for number 12 to help you out on that one, and I'm going to do number 9 with you. All right, so number 9, we have x plus 5. Recall that the plus 5 represents my y-intercept, meaning that I'm going to cross my y-axis at 5, so I'm going to plot a point right there. And then my slope in front of my x happens to be 1. Or I can write that as a fraction, 1 over 1, meaning that I'm going to go up 1 and to the right 1. And I'm going to continue that pattern on and on until eternity. But once I've done my, got my two points, all I need to do is connect it and make sure my lines are in the right space. space. Ooh, can't talk. And... There I go. So I have my basic line right here. Why don't you try problems 10, 11, and 12 on your own and see how you did. All right, so what I did to show it just, I put everything on the graph. So just to kind of show you what's going on, I did problem number 10 in red, problem number 11 was blue, and problem 12 is in ink. So you can kind of take a look at your graph and see how you compared. So again, this is problem 10, blue is problem 11, and this ink one is problem 12. So pause the video, check yourself out if you need to. All right, so let's look at 14. Uh, 14 says you are running at a rate of six miles per hour. It wants us to write a function that represents the distance D traveled in H hours. And then it asks me the question, how many miles do you run in two hours? So let's go through this real quick. It's saying the represents the D traveled in H hours. So my question is going to be, which is my input, which is my output? Uh, and we already kind of get a hint here. And it's right here. It says you are running at a rate of six miles per hour. 
First off, it says that I have a rate of six miles per hour. This whole statement is actually my slope. I'm running at a slope, a rate of six. All right, so keep that in your mind. And then it tells me this, not just six miles, but per hour. When you see something like this, miles per hour, this is actually telling you what your, your input and your output variables are. Remember that I told you before that slope is a change in Y over, I'm going to put change, this is the Greek word letter for change, over a change in X. A, great, a change in input over a change in output. Hey, that's what's happening here. It says miles per hour. This case, my output is going to be miles per, meaning the division symbol, an hour. So I've just found out what is going to represent my X values and what represents my Y values. Knowing that, we can actually kind of see this right here together. D is our distance, H is our hours. So really, what we can state is when we write our function, this is going to be our D and this will be our H, okay? That's what's happening here. So we kind of defined what our independent variables and our dependent variables are just by looking at what this is saying. It's giving me a slope. It's telling me the change in input over the change, uh, excuse me, the change in output over the change in input. That's what's happening in this particular problem. So now that we know that, it says write a function that represents the distance traveled in H hours. Well, we can simply say that our distance is equal to my slope of six times the amount of hours. That's pretty much it. There's nothing else to this particular problem. All right, so that is my function. That is my equation. Then it says, how many miles do you run in two hours? Well, that's easy. We just basically plug two in the place of this H. And when we do, we're gonna get two, uh, six, excuse me, D is equal to six times two, or we can just simply say that it's 12 miles, okay? 14, the cost of admission for a student is $4 less than the cost of admission for an adult. Write a function that relates the cost of admission for a student S with the cost of admission for an adult A. So this particular problem, it doesn't really give us any hint on what we can call our input and our output variables, but we can kind of make this one up as we go along. As with the previous problem, it does give us a hint because that's what was saying in the rate. It does give us a hint by this definition. But uh, this one, not so much. So let's just go with this very first sentence. We know that a student S is going to be S and an adult is going to be A. So let's read this together. The cost of admission for a student is, would be my equal sign, $4 less than the cost of admission for adult, meaning that the adult costs more, which makes sense, and then we take away four. So the cost of admission for a student is $4 less than the cost of admission for adult. That is our basic function, all right? So we've got A done. Then it says, what is the cost of admission for a student when the cost of admission for adult is 750? Well, it's just a matter of plugging things in. The student is equal to 750 minus four. And we can solve that and we find out that the student is equal to, their price would be $3.50. All right, oops, didn't realize I was going crooked. Sorry about that. Now, let's look at the next one. What is the cost of admission for an adult when the cost of admission for a student is $2? Well, it's just a matter of plugging things in again. This time, we know the cost of the student. So the student is $2, and our job is to find out how much the adult cost. Well, it's just a basic equation. Let's solve for it by using SADMEP, getting rid of a minus four by adding four to both sides, and we get that the cost of admission for an adult is $6. And we're done. All right, that's it for this video. Again, a lot of this, what you're doing is pretty much kind of review. It's just adding just a few more terminology for you. And that's it, and as always, you know how to find me. I'll see you in the next one, bye-bye.